Hey everybody, it's late night, my daughter's been put down to bed even though I can hear her talking to herself, and I think it's time to talk about art again. Uh, the guy that I'm drawing right now, uh, if you can see his figure, you'll see that uh, uh, he looks like he's in a little coffee shop, he's got his teacup, he's got his pinky extended. Uh, this guy was actually, um, I, I was in a bar when I drew this. Uh, I went out with my wife to, uh, to our favorite bar together. Uh, um, if for those of you who live in Raleigh, it's the Flying Saucer. Um, my favorite bar to go to uh, when Megan's not around is Havana's Deluxe because cigars. Uh, anyway, so I, I caught a quick glimpse of this guy, and he had this very full beard, and he had a peanut-shaped head. And that's not a shape that I draw a whole lot. And something that I'm, I, one of my goals with this, uh, with my, with my junk drawing and my sketching and my uh, character design, is to, to build my visual vocabulary. So he looked interesting, and I'd never drawn a, uh, a head shape that way before, to my knowledge. So that's what I did. Something that's important to mention is that uh, this particular guy, I happened to catch a glimpse of him just before he left the room. Um, so when I when I was drawing this uh, in the bar and hanging out with my love, I uh, a, a lot of this was just memory, and a lot of the details of his face were just kind of made up. For instance, I have no idea what shape his eyebrows were in. I could not remember at all his hairstyle. I knew that he had this huge bulbous head, and I thought it'd be really funny to to. Uh, give him just the most tragic comb over I could think of just because it, it looks funny and I enjoy that and part of the exercise part of the whole purpose of finding your voice is to is to make mental notes and to say out loud huh here's a thing that I enjoy uh, his head shape his eye shape and his nose shape and the shape of his very glorious beard uh, those were the things that I really remembered and I latched on to everything else about this figure was stuff that I just made up on the fly uh, so everything you see here, um, figure-wise, uh, like his, his body shape, all that, it was all made up. It was just extrapolated from just just the shape of his head, uh, his eyes, his nose, and his beard. Um, and here's the point where I put my sketch down uh, off camera. When I reach over to the side, I'm, I'm clicking with... You can't see it, but at my drawing table, uh, uh, I've got my, uh, my, my computer table is next to me, to my right. Uh, and I've got my, my screen aimed at me, so um, I put my, my keyboard and my mouse uh, and uh, uh, at the top of my drawing table. So when you see that right hand go away, it's because I'm clicking something. Uh, something about me is uh, when, I'm, when I'm inking, I, I go insane unless I'm listening to something. Uh, usually when I'm doing the inks, I'm listening to uh, talking. Like I want to hear a podcast, I want to hear a dialogue heavy uh, TV series maybe that's on the internet or that I've got DVDs of. Uh, at the time that I'm I'm inking this dude, I'm uh, listening to an arts podcast. Although lately, uh, while I've been working on my my graphic novel series, uh, I've been watching a lot of Aqua Teens and uh, just thinking a lot about in cartoons and animation and, and getting really inspired to do some character designing, despite how simple the character designs are in that show. Um, so let me let me tell you a little bit about the process of, of character designing this guy, just kind of how I do things. Because if you'll notice, I mean, I I, I draw um, I draw left to right the same way that you read, and this guy that I'm I'm inking and rendering is is the furthest left. So what I what I do is uh, I put down his head, I put down his face, and then I started making up the rest of the facial features that I remembered, and from that I just kind of decide. Uh, what, what is this guy doing? What, is, what do I think about this guy? How old is he? And I don't think about, I'm not thinking about the original person that I saw. Uh, by this point, I've put him out of my head on purpose. The reason for that is a, a huge key for this exercise is also to, to stretch my imagination, to stretch my eyes as well as my imagination. Uh, a huge, huge part about character design is, um, is kind of, it's, it's, it's operating kind of like a writer. Uh, I tell a lot of comic book writers that their artists that they work with do as much writing as they do, and it's uh, stuff like this, uh, a character that maybe not, that the writer just said, and put some extras in the background, the character designer, I mean, I'm sorry, a writer will say, put some people in the background in any given scene, and uh, it's easy to write that and just say, throw some throwaway characters, 
Uh, but an artist uh, has to design those characters, either beforehand like this, like you're watching, or on the fly. And they have to think about little things. Well, what kind of person would be in this situation? Are they tall? Are they short? What kind of neighborhood is this in? Is this in a neighborhood? Are we in outer space? There's a lot of stuff that, uh, uh, that people don't necessarily see that artists have to think about. Um... For this particular guy, his face, I have no idea how old he is. He's got, oh, there's my head. There's my head covering up my hand. I need to move that camera. Uh, this particular guy, he had one of those faces where he could be anywhere from 30 to 49. Like, I want to say he, he might have been as old as 50, but not not any older than that. It's just, if you, if you stared at him, he's like, wow, he looks really good for 45, or he looks like uh, a very mature person for the age of 30. <clears throat> Um, I, uh, I gave him, uh, a slouch, some skinny arms, a, a little pot belly. That, that, that tiny little pot belly that only skinny people get. Skinny people with a, with the skinny toothpick legs. Uh, what you're seeing, what you're seeing is me drawing my envy. Like, me personally, I've got very thick tree trunk thighs and tree trunk legs. And, uh, uh, they, they make things difficult, man. Uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm a fairly portly dude myself. So I, I see guys who are built like him, and I'm like, man, just look at, I bet every single pair of pants you ever put on fits. The how, what is that like? <laughs> so uh, there's there's a little uh, window into what I think about when I'm looking at other people's, when other dudes' body shapes. It's like, wow, dude, I bet he doesn't have problems finding pants in department stores. Uh, it sounds way creepier when I say that out loud. I, I don't mean it to be. Oh, okay, okay. Anyway, back to the drawing. I worked on that, that hand that I'm making right now. I drew that four times. Uh, hands. Like, I'm, I'm proud of my hands. Like, the hand that's holding the T especially took forever, because I wanted him to extend the pinky in a very specific way, but uh, I had to draw that pinky like six times before I got the way that I wanted it. It's just, it's just two lines. It was just two lines to get it down. I'm... Uh, Kind of embarrassed that it took me that long, but at the same time, it's just, that's, that's kind of the nature of the beast. That's what happens when you're drawing. You wrestle with it until you get it the way you want to, and it takes as long as it takes. Um, I'm, I'm pretty proud of my hands in general. Like, I'm, I'm usually happy with how my hands turn out, or mostly happy. And on this guy, I'm, I'm actually, I feel really good about those hands. But man, they, they take forever. Uh... And there's my head again. Man, I, I, I need a haircut or something. Um, so anyway, just looking at this guy's face, I thought he looked, one way or the other, he looked kind of mature, but also like, uh, like that, just that expression I gave him looked like he might be kind of full of himself. So I was like, all right, what, what, mature and full of themselves, uh, where do I see that kind of person? Oh, I see that kind of person sitting outside at a coffee shop, uh, near me that's right across from, from NC State, um. And, uh, so I, I just like, alright, let's draw him sitting down, drinking some coffee. He's got the, the leg cross that's comfortable when you've got skinny legs and very uncomfortable when you've got tree trunks. Uh, and, and to make him seem a little snootier, a little daintier, I give him that, uh, that iron, uh, that little, little dainty looking iron chair. As though iron could look dainty. Um, just because I, I think those chairs are, are... Uh, uh, very snooty looking. I mean, I love them to death. Almost every time I draw any characters in a cafe, uh, uh, I love drawing those those iron chairs. And I am reaching over f to turn on some more jams or something. Big head, big head. Okay. Um, man, get hey, stupid, get your head out of the way. All right, there we go. I, I gave him a tiny little dainty coffee cup as well and extended his pinky just because just I, I was and and I gave him a real book like I almost wanted to put the thought bubble that uh, uh, it's like iPad <laughs> e-readers and iPads are too mainstream now I'm going old school or something like that or put a thought bubble that says uh, everything I listen to is on vinyl just kind of the the get your head out of the way fat head come on move your head there we go um just, just, I, I wanted to make a cartoon character of, of, like, while I'm drawing this guy, I decided that, uh, this guy is a snooty professor who teaches in a subject that is kind of worthless, and only he and maybe five other people in the world actually care about it. Uh, probably, uh, I don't know, some, some kind of literature, some kind of obscure literature in a foreign language. Uh, his favorite author is probably an author that uh, nobody's heard of, and he's full of righteous nerd rage that nobody's heard of this author. 
Uh, maybe he teaches a writing class, but he teaches it very, very poorly because he couldn't make it as a writer himself. Uh, I have unfortunately experienced that kind of teacher several times. Uh, but what I was getting with this guy was I, I gave him a smug look and I gave him a very tragic, funny-looking comb-over. So it's like, what what kind of character would be funny? What kind of what kind of character would 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 make uh, a good little uh, light-hearted comedy uh, that I can just put onto that that head that I had created? Uh, so I the whole time I'm drawing, I'm thinking he's he's an English professor. He's a literature professor at uh, some very small private liberal arts school and he's very very full of himself and just uh just the whole idea was to make him one of those uh uh make him a specific trope he's somebody that's so pompous that it's really really funny to watch him get a pie in the face you know just anything that that puts some some uh some egg on his face uh would be hilarious just like the guy who's very very serious and very very full of himself suddenly trips on a banana peel and falls face first into something unpleasant i don't know uh, just that trope is is always funny to me so uh, this whole time i'm thinking yep college professor pompous and uh and when i was dressing him when i was when i was deciding what he was wearing i was making decisions based on that notice he's wearing shorts uh and a t-shirt and a scarf why do why does anybody do that? That must be the most uncomfortable thing in the world. I know that my, if I did that, my neck would sweat so hard. And that is unpleasant for everyone involved. It's just every time I see somebody wearing uh, a toboggan hat or a scarf in the middle of summer, particularly summers around here, it's so hot and it's so humid all the time. Just why? What, why? What's going through your head? So what would... Uh, what would a pompous professor do? He would try to stay uh, hip like the kids, and he'd wear a scarf and and and, and pull it off as as though um as though he's he's always done. It. He did it before it was mainstream. So kind of kind of the aging hipster. Uh, while I was inking, I kind of messed up because those shorts were supposed to be cut off jeans. They were jeans that he converted into jorts, but I forgot. So I was like, you know what? He's one of the dudes that buys shorts that are too short for him anyway. Old guys do that, right? Yeah, totally. Older folks get the shorter shorts that make me uncomfortable. Do you hear how judgmental I am? Gracious. Uh, stop. Gotta turn something else on my computer. God forbid I work in silence. Um, yeah, man. Wow. I am judgy. I need to watch that. Uh, but at the same time, that's also part of, of finding your voice. It's, it's uh, uh, the whole time I'm making this and the whole time I'm creating a character behind this guy, I'm conscious of the fact that everything I'm making is a projection. I made an image loosely based on a real person, uh, and the rest is just based on, on my perceptions of who this guy would be. So it's all just projecting onto this, this figure. Everything outside of his head shape, his eyes, and his beard shape, and his nose. All of it is just me projecting and having a character take shape. Um... And for me, this guy is, is uh, to make him more pompous, the idea behind giving him, giving him uh, a little bit more of a subdued hipster look was because um, just I've seen, I've seen this, this kind of professor before. It's, just, it's, it's, it's tragic and, and uh, uh, more than a little comical when somebody 50 years old uh, still tries to look and act like they are 20. Uh, there's tons of people who who grow and change with the times, <clears throat> and I think that uh, it's it's kind of obvious in these people the way that they carry themselves, that uh, uh, the way they dress, the way they carry themselves, the way that they present themselves to the world is is not artificial. It's it's uh, uh, it's a part of their natural growth. And then there's other people where it's absolutely artifice. It's it's absolutely hey man, would you really have that scarf on if you didn't see the twenty year olds in your class doing it? Like, this, this is one of the professors that it's very important to him that he seem cool to his students uh, and and make it look effortless, make it look like he's not trying. Uh, also, speaking of being judgmental, uh, when I'm stopping and putting my pad down at this point, I'm not actually turning something on my computer. I just realized that that's when I'm switching markers. Uh, so I need to be nicer to everyone because... Uh, being being the guy who uh, talks smack about everybody is just unhealthy, and I should really, really not be that guy. Uh, you see me hesitating there. I'm trying to make um, 
decisions on how dark that like uh, how dark or light something should be and i decided it was easier to make the decision about the book and so i i switched up and started working um so that's something that that's not talked about enough is uh um drawing but any art in general but particularly in in for this case it, drawing is uh problem solving uh i have a problem i need to render shading on the object that my character is holding is it dark or is it light uh, is it high light or low light? How how thick is the shadow? Is it um, oh, excuse me. Uh, so just those those kind of decisions. It's it's constantly making decisions. Uh, it's making decisions and it's solving problems. I need to portray uh, a given story beat, or I need to portray something about this guy without him actually doing too much and without him saying anything. How can I do that? So visual art is decision making and problem solving. Uh, the decision making is what takes the most time, not necessarily the rendering. Uh, I spend more time thinking about where my pencil, my marker, my inks need to go than I do actually uh, putting it there. Um, for instance, like uh, you, like right now, I'm I'm graying uh, the scarf, I believe. But while I'm graying that scarf, I'm looking at his head and wondering, do I need to put more shadows on it or not? While I'm graying that scarf, I'm thinking, do I need to make his shirt darker or not? Um, so even, even while the marker is moving, I'm still, uh, making decisions elsewhere. I'm still spending more of, of the actual time of the drawing, uh, trying to make the decision. That's something that's not talked about enough, is how much, uh, drawing and every other art form is really just decision making and problem solving. Uh, that's what's happening. You, the, the very outset is, is, uh, uh, very poetically, just the throws of creation. Just move your pencil as quick as you can, throw some lines down, and, and see what you can create. But once you've got your sketch, once you've got the idea of the thing that you're making, once, once the idea has become more solidified, then it's time to start making very specific decisions. Is that shirt dark or is it light? I don't know. The scarf is kind of dark. I wanted to make a dark shirt, but the pants are dark and the scarf is dark. Maybe I should go a little bit lighter on the shirt. Maybe I should go medium on the shirt, but ah, oh, would that wash out the pants and the scarf? Darn it, why didn't I think this part through? Um, is he in high light or low light? Is there going to be a, a really, really thick shadow on those shadowy parts that I drew out the first time? Or is it is it going to be a very subtle shadow? Is he under soft light? Is it more like a, a, what filmmakers call the magic hour? Is he in the outdoor part of the cafe during the dusk part of the day when it, the light is not too harsh, but there's still uh, plenty of good contrast? Uh, that sort of thing. It's it's weird decisions. Like when when you're drawing this guy sitting down, you don't think to yourself, "Oh, I wonder what kind of day it is." But when it when it comes time to rendering, like that decision suddenly appears. Oh man, outside or inside, what kind of day is it? Uh, and if I were a better artist, uh, I could make it more obvious with my renderings. But uh, alas, you're you're kind of left to deal with what little results I can produce here. Um. I want to take a minute real quick. I want to, I want you to, to, if you, I mean, my hand's covering some of it up, but I want you to look more, more to the right. You can see that I've drawn his face four more times. Uh, this is a, a pretty essential part of my, my personal character design process. Uh, I have to draw at least, you know, from the, what you're seeing uh, on the, the guy himself that I'm, I'm working on the marker with. <sighs> When you, the the guy who's who's actually getting the markers drawn, his face is pointing to the right, and it's at the the three quarters view, and that's the three quarters view is kind of the ultimate view because you can see uh, his facial expression as well as uh, the the rest of his head shape, and uh, it's it's like a stage play. You don't want your actors facing directly at the audience. You don't want them facing dead on unless unless you're you're pulling something. You want them at at uh, three quarters as though they're talking to other people. But also like a stage play, you don't want them actually talking to the other people because then they're standing to the audience in profile. And that's, again, unless you're pulling something, profile is not where you want your actors and characters to be. So if you'll notice, uh, almost, all of, uh, almost all of, if not every single one of the characters I draw start out in three-quarters position somehow. It gives, uh, gives you, the viewer, a much better idea of their figure, of their posture. Uh, as well as the details of their face, should they be talking or interacting with other people. You can see just above my hand, though, that I do have him from directly onward. I do have him facing directly at the camera. Uh, and this is because in character design, it is super important. You have to know, you have to be able to make the decisions to turn your character all the way around. 
uh, if you see to the right of my hand right now, uh, the he, he's angry and screaming. Uh, that's another thing that I do. It's like when I draw his face each time, I don't keep the same expression. I want to run you through the gamut of his expressions, the kinds that he might have. If you look in the top corner, that little surprised look. Oh, it went away. Sorry. He's got a surprised look with his eyebrows super high, and he looks genuinely surprised, but notice his mouth is closed. In my head, like, this guy is very subdued. The only emotions that really come out loud and strong are, I guess, when he's angry. Uh, to, mostly because if, if you're the pompous type, you do not like being surprised. So he tries to... Uh, being angry is cool when you're trying to be aloof uh, and, and you're your pompous professor, but uh, uh, being surprised is not. So keep his mouth closed, so even his surprise is a little bit dialed down. Uh, when I finish picking out my next marker, and I can talk about one of his other faces. Come on, dude. There we go. Oh, snap! Check it out. It's no longer marker time. It's time for the whites. Uh, what you're seeing right now is a Prismacolor white pencil that I just broke the lead of, and now I'm sharpening. Man, that is, that is frustrating. I do not like the colored pencils for this exact reason. They, are, they break all the time. <clears throat> um, this is the reason why I'm getting the, the Tone Sketchbook. Uh, this character is actually the very first page in this sketchbook. It's a Tone Sketchbook. It's my first one. And um, um, putting on highlights and stuff is, is uh, uh, simply put, not where I live. That's not my comfort zone. That's not what I do. Uh, I've been working in gray markers for, for something like four years now. I've been working in gray markers and adding gray tones for four years now, five years, something like that. I don't know. And uh, it's been great, and it's been a lot of fun, and I know what I'm doing with marker in my hand. I know how how saturated I want the marker to be. I know how precious I want to be, and, and uh, it turns out the answer is not very precious. Uh, and I know how subtle I want to be with my with my gradients, and it uh, turns out actually kind of subtle. Um but when it comes to adding whites and highlights, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, for instance, right there, like the coffee's supposed to be steaming, but not so steamy that I'm obscuring so much of of the detail that I put into that scarf. Uh, and also, coffee doesn't steam that hard. Um, so, yeah, switching, switching gears back, if you can kind of see, I drew his face from the profile. I kept it a straight face because it's mostly existing to, to tell me or... Um, uh, anyone else who sees this, just what he looks like if you turn to the profile. So every character design, I have to draw his face and draw uh, any given character's face at least four times. One from directly forward, one from direct profile, and then the rest from three quarters. And notice the other two faces that are at three quarters are done with his face going the other way. Uh, that's pretty important to me too. And there's my uh, white, my white gel pen. I like that way more than I like the. Uh, the prisma colors, and I'm trying to decide where highlights go. Made a good decision on those eyes, good decision on the nose. On the one part of its forehead, yes, but on the other part, no. The the little little glare on the left there, that doesn't belong. He's in one directional light. There is no he's outside, so there's no bounce light. Uh, that should not be there. And now I'm I'm putting some some white lines in his hair and in his beard, uh, to to make him look like he's going going a little gray, um, which Adds a little something to the drawing, but I just kind of put those in willy-nilly without thinking about it. And that was that was a mistake. I should not have done that. Uh, but, I mean, again, that's the whole purpose of this sketchbook. That's the whole purpose of working this way. And the pen is not working. I need to get a nicer pen. Uh, that's the whole point of working this way, is to, is to uh, look back and say, I could have done this better. And notice, I'm not fixing it. This is, this is something that's really important that not a lot of people get. The way to think about it is, I'm going to get it right the next time. Because when you work in particularly comics, you're going to be drawing it again. You've got another chance. Uh, and because you're going to be drawing again, because you've got that other chance, you need to move now. Um, so that's why uh, it's not fixed right away. Anyway, uh, I've run out of time. Uh, the next sketch that we're, we're going to look at is actually uh, a kind of a, a failure sketch. And uh, it's really great because something I want to talk about is how uh, every artist kind of fails in what they're doing sometimes. And why not only is that okay, but why that's necessary. Why it's good. Uh, anyway, take care of yourself and uh, make art.